If you like Jurassic Park and dinosaurs, um, you're going to like this video. That's my reference right there. Um, this Triceratops, I was not trying to make it photo real. Um, kind of like my other artwork on this page, I'm kind of keeping it a little bit cartoony for the kids. Um, I'm not a kid, but I like the, the, the cartoony stuff. And so I gave it big googly eyes, and I don't know if that's what, and eyebrows, which later on those eyebrows disappear anyway, which is kind of unfortunate because I thought it was kind of cute. But I'm um, putting in my sketch um, based off that drawing. Um, this is kind of like life drawing because I did not use a projector for this. Um, I eyeballed it and I got it pretty good. I was pretty happy with the actual drawing. Um, usually in the beginning of my artwork, um, I'm the most happy. And the reason why is because later on, if you watch enough of my videos, you realize that I often uh, get into a little bit of despair over the way things are going. Um, usually it's after the uh, ink wash episode. And um, coming up, you're going to see, it's, there's something funny coming up, I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. But I'm putting in my hatching lines here to give it some texture, uh, give it a little depth, reinforce my lines, uh, make it look really super cartoony, and that's going to come into play later on. Uh, those little ha oh, okay, this is the actual painting I did off of that exact same thing. That, that, that was all acrylic, and that's why you should go back and look at my original stuff, because my acrylic stuff looks nothing like this. This, this looks more like a, a comic book with all my hatch lines. My um, acrylic stuff looks more polished, more finished, and it's probably because that particular picture probably took me five hours to paint. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to go quickly. I was trying to make it look good, and I ended up giving that picture away to somebody, and I think they gave it to their kid, which I'm glad to know. I'm, I'm glad to know there's some kid somewhere uh, with my painting on his wall. Um, I've probably given away a half a dozen different pictures to kids over the last two years. I gave one to, away to a daycare, which is kind of funny because the picture, I should have pulled it up, uh, had some teeth in it, like a piranha, and some people made comments that it probably wasn't appropriate for a daycare, but I don't know. It was just a cute picture of a fish. Um, so here I am putting some texture on the Triceratops. And it looks like I'm, oh, okay, I decided to put a tree in here. One of these days, I'm going to do one of my trees. I have a way of doing trees. It's kind of unique, but I need a subject to put in there, a bird or a turtle or something so the tree's not just a tree. I know there's people out there who like landscapes. They like pictures of flowers. They like pictures of, oh, watch this. This is funny. So I'm filling up my, my tray here. I wanted to show you how I do this. And uh, ready, set, here goes. Oops, <laughs> I spilled it on my picture. But as a true professional, I said, whatever, I'm not going to start over. I knew I'd be able to fix it. So right here, I'm kind of fixing it. I'm going over it with my grays. I'm hiding that part. And later on, I hide the rest of it. So you, you never even knew it was there. And that was all just so I could show you guys how I fill my ink tray. You know, that's how dedicated I am to these uh, instructional videos, which is kind of funny because I don't consider this an instructional video. Here's why I, I want to know this. How many of the people that watch these things are artists or students? And how many people out there just watch this because it's fun to watch? Because I watch a lot of videos on YouTube uh, of things I would never do. Um, I mean, like people who cut trees into bears, uh, do sculptures, uh, build things I would never build in a million years because it's entertaining, it's fun to watch. I like to see how people do this stuff. Um, so I watch my own videos, and I hate to say this for the, for the entertainment value because I, I watch this and it kind of blows me away how I do it. And uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what's going through my brain when I'm, when I'm putting this stuff on there because I'm an autopilot. So if you watch this to learn something, if you uh, uh, use this for education, let me know. If you just watch it because it's fun to watch, let me know. Because um, I, I know I talk a lot about what I'm doing, but what else would I do for eight minutes? Um, I could talk about Triceratops. Um, I don't know much about them. Um, I know up at Morrill Hall in Lincoln they have a, have one. It's a skeleton. I don't know if it's a true one or if it's just a, something about casting. But it's pretty cool. Um, I went in there one day and took some pictures for a reference, but because it was, the room was so dark, it wouldn't really work out. So I'm always looking for references online. I prefer to use references that are, that are semi-real. Um, here's, here's some instruction. If you want to learn how to draw, if you want to learn how to do this, you need to do some life drawing. Now, I did a life drawing of a shoe. It's on this uh, on my website. 
or on my YouTube channel, and that uh, video has six views. And that is terrible because that's the, probably the one video that I did that, that's the most instructional. So if you want to know how to draw something from life, other than going out and hiring a model, watch that video. Because if, if you look at the thumbnail, the actual shoe and, and the, the painting almost look alike. I was actually kind of shocked at how, it sounds like I'm bragging, but how real it looked. And that just comes from experience. You have to get out and do it. Now, we need to talk about, um, about uh, my subscribers real quick. Um, I've doubled my subscribers in the last uh, month because of this, and thanks to you guys. Um, I'd like to get a lot more subscribers, and I need you to click the bell if you want to be notified on my, on my new work. Right now, I'm putting out a painting about uh, every single day for the last two weeks, and I'm going to keep on doing that until I hit 200 videos. And since these are sim pretty simple to do, uh, it doesn't take me very long. Uh, this one probably took me a half an hour to, to, to do. Uh, actually, the video editing took, takes longer, this, this voiceover, than the actual artwork. Now, i got to say one thing about this. I, I, I chose red because I wanted to, to contrast that blue, blue sky. And um, you tell me if you like it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm in love with the red. Uh, look at the way I'm using the, those whites there. I, I skipped over painting part of that because I wanted to do a highlight. And instead of having to put the white paint on, I just didn't paint it. That's a true watercolor trick. I've said that on repeated videos, but it is. If you want to learn how to do something, that's how you do it. You want to put whites in your watercolor paint, just don't paint on it. Um, I would not uh, use pink because pink and red are, I've learned the hard way, are not the same thing. Uh, there's, no, there's no such thing as light red. Pink is its own thing. Um, so I, now I'm going on, I'm doing the eyes, kind of getting them a little darker, and I mixed a little bit of something with my green so I could separate that from the blue from my little tree there. Um, I love my trees. I'm going to do something. I need to like find something to put in my tree and do nothing but just trees. They're fun to do. They're a nice little doodle. Um, this looks like I darkened my iris in on my eyeball, and I'm putting some scales on the... Um, Triceratops, that's basically pink. <laughs> there it is. It's pink. But, you know, I don't know. It basically was white watercolor paint, and I just tinted it a tiny bit because I didn't want it to look completely stark white. So I'm giving him some scales um, all over, and this this part's kind of fun. It's just like decoration. I'm just decorating the guy. Uh, get some highlights on the eyelids, and then eventually I come here and I fix the eye. The eyeball is the last thing I do, and it's the one thing you have to watch because here it goes. I'm putting the under lighting on the eye. Uh, that's very important to, to two-tone the eye to make it look like it's getting a bit of light inside. Then you put the eye shine on. Once, you, once the eye shine is on, your picture is basically done because now it just looks awesome. Now you want to cut this thing out and put it in a frame and hang it in your kitchen or in your living room next to your couch. Especially if your couch is red because it will match your furniture. Now I, normally I don't do furniture paintings, but this one would, would look pretty good, well maybe in your kid's bedroom if the kid has uh, some red uh, sheets or bl blankets or whatnot. Um, now I'm putting in some background leaves. It's just non-distinct uh, blobs of color just to kind of make things way too busy and make it all dizzy. But um, uh, thank you for coming and watching this uh, video and check back for my next one.